Hello and welcome to another edition of Between the Pages with James Lott Jr. I'm James Lott Jr. of JLJ Media, uh, my online network, and we have over 35 shows. And this show, I love talking to creatives, especially ones who are multi hyphenates. I was just telling her this off camera. She's a lot like me, we do different things. So let me tell you some of the things that she does that she does. Uh, <laughs> producer, director, uh, actor, of course, so she's in front of the camera. Also, singer, also model. Um, she has a, a new film called Tango Shalom, but I want to ask her about her time with the Gypsy King. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Miss Judy Beecher. Hello, Judy. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> welcome to the show. Well, no. Okay, so I want to ask you, how are the Gypsy Kings? I love them. Bombaleo was my favorite song. Uh, I know. So Bombaleo, Bombaleo. I love the so tell me what you did with them. Like, what did you do with them? Well, I didn't sing with them. We sang, we were, we were, I wasn't part of the, the Gypsy King. No, 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 no. Yeah, I'm, not not part, yeah. I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> sorry, sorry, folks. I meant like, yeah, she worked with me. You weren't in the, in the group. Yeah. So, so I, you know, I, when I was, I was modeling in, uh, in Europe and as a fluke, my, my roommates at the time, one was a photographer who's actually a very well-known photographer, very well-known photographer right now. And this other guy who wasn't anything, he was, you know, <laughs> he was a sales rep, but he played the guitar and he said, Judy, why don't we go around and you sing, I'll play the guitar and Yvonne, the photographer, you hold the hat. And I was like, what? <laughs> really? Yeah, really. That's kind of interesting. I've never sung, um, but I, I was always singing, always. Oh, okay. okay. But he's like, he just decided you sing. He didn't even like know. And so we worked on a repertoire and we were living in Milan and we went on a road trip from Milan through the, through, through um, the south of France uh, into Italy. And in Avignon, we met the Gypsy Kings in Avignon. We actually did really, really, really well um, doing this. And we would make so much money. We had a Mercedes or a BMW and we would hide it. <laughs> we would hide it and be like the real buskers on the street, yes. you know, to seem like we needed the money more. But, yeah. and, and we'd go out and to the you know restaurants and we'd make so much money that we would end up going into these fancy restaurants from the money we made, like singing a few songs yeah. outside the restaurant. Um, and that's how I became a professional singer after that. And so we met the Gypsy Kings in Avignon and we all said we were all singing together uh, with the Gypsy Kings in Avignon and in the Place of, of Avignon. And then we continued on our way. Yeah, yeah. So it was really, it was, it was amazing. And we ended up in Barcelona where I became a professional model and singer. So. Isn't it? I mean, you look back on stuff. Like I look back on my adventures. I mean, I don't even know can you have adventures like that anymore. I mean, I just feel like I look back on something. I go, "Wow, wasn't that just great life experience for you?" Yeah, I had an amazing, amazing time. I mean, I was traveling around the world. I was, you know, living in different countries. I lived in five countries, and I, it, it was, it was amazing. And um, I met. The, I think the best thing is the people and the cultures and meeting the different people in the different places. And I still have amazing friends all over the world like just as much as i do in new york and la you know i can fill the theater in paris with the people that i know there and and you know italy i don't know if i could feel fill a theater but i have a lot of good friends in italy as well and well you could go places, places and have places to stay if you had to that that's the one thing you could go, you could go somewhere and you know call that's on friends true. and i don't have to be like a tour i've never been a tourist like I never went somewhere once, like went right after college. But then after I've always been like a local when I go somewhere. And I think it's so much better because, you know, you learn about how things really are rather than just like looking at your guidebook. And let's look at that monument over there. Let's do that. I was never that way either, Judy. I was always like, when I go somewhere, I'll be fully immersed. Um, I want to I want to I want to learn the language. I want to learn the people, yeah. the customs, the best food you can find is not on a book. A lot of no. times it's in someone's small kitchen somewhere off the beaten path. I mean, I just, I just, I just wonder if they can do that. I mean, well, this all different world now. But I was saying, I mean, when I was doing that stuff, I was in my twenties, early thirties, yeah. early thirties. I mean, some early thirties right. stuff before you grow up, whatever. Um, you know, as they claim. Uh, but I, 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 I look back in those times, and I have some of those friendships still too to this day. That was like, remember that time we just decided to like, you know. <laughs> live off of wine and cookies for a week. I mean, like, I mean, it just, it's just, it's like, it sounds, 
you know, whatever. But it's like, it's, it was such great. It taught me stuff that I'm using now today in my life. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Of course it, I like it all. I, I think like, it's like such, it's like world experience is the best thing because it opens your eyes to, to things that by just being home in your little space and your apartment and hanging out with the same people and doing the same thing, it's like, you learn nothing. But by going and like experiencing the world like that, like I did, and I still do, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. still do. Um, it's, I'm, it's, you're constantly growing and learning and, and it's, I became, I, I went out of being like a shy little girl, you know, from going to Europe to this like singer, you know, getting up anywhere, getting yeah. on stage. And I came back, my parents were like, oh my gosh. This? <laughs> what happened to you? Yeah, where'd she come from? Who, who this is? Yeah, exactly. That's, I mean, no, but it is. I mean, that, that's what life experience can do and travel. And I think there's nothing wrong with being a creative who likes to be a little gypsy-like and likes to go out there and, and experience life. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I went to college and I did all that. And I know you've studied, you have some great acting credits and you studied, but sometimes there are things you can only learn by just living. By living, exactly. Seriously. Yeah. Are you a Sagittarius? No, I'm a Taurus, actually. Oh, no. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. That's what's so crazy. I think, I think when I did my signs, my my moon and my sun sign, my moon and what my rising signs are like. I think Capricorn or something or another one's like an air sign. It's like I'm a tour. Usually, I like to be in one spot. Everything's like, but I'm not. I'm not yeah. like. That. I like security and stuff, but I like feeling free. So some things I have, but then I came from hippie parents. That could be part of it, where they were hippie, always hippie parents. Yeah, they were hippies. Uh, so I kind of with the free love and free everybody and like everybody uh, and, and we just got we traveled a lot I mean like you know just great. like you know I have family members all over the world it's just like you're going wow. over here to visit grandfather and you're going over here to visit your cousin it was like we weren't just stuck in law I was raised born and raised in Los Angeles but we weren't stuck here in LA I had a world view very young yeah so I think that helped probably why I'm not so like strict and I got to this and then do I have, I have a house and everything and I like I have my security on that end but I love travel. I love just, I don't do itineraries. I love just to go and just. I don't either. I don't either. Oh, I I don't, I'm very spur of the moment kind of, you want to go, you want to go this weekend to Paris? Yeah. I'll yeah, go. sure. Why not? Okay. okay. You know. Let me clear everything. I said, I always had a, I was, I was, I have a passport and a toothbrush. I'm good. I've always <laughs> Well, I need a couple more things, but I mean, wait, I, me, me too. I need like a dress. Well, you know, but Judy, I, but you know, you know what I mean, though. Like, I'm a girl. No, my makeup. No, no. Hey, no, you could always buy makeup a dress somewhere if you had to. True, that's true. I guess you could buy toothbrush too. But my whole point is, I have a passport. I always have a passport, so I can leave the country if I want to. I don't be stuck here all the time. Um, but no, I just, I just, I, I look back at that stuff. And I just think, wow, that was such great. People go, you have these experiences. I go, no, they, I did, but that's. That's what's so great about expanding your circle because we're both creative. So in our profession, it feeds your profession and your performances. Would you agree? Exactly. Yeah, no, definitely. I do. Okay. So I want to ask you. Mm -hmm. When people say, because you do so much, we will say, Junie, what do you do for a living? So what, do, what is your short answer? <laughs> well... I'm primarily an actress. I mean, that's what I studied. That's okay. what I love. That's my love. And then these, all these other things kind of stem out of that. So I tell them, I'm, if they say, what do you do? I'm an actress. I'm, I also direct. I also write. I also produce. Okay. Okay. I also, you know, I'm, I'm a singer songwriter. I do voiceover. I, you know, I, so I, my number, the thing I always say first is that I'm an actress. That's because that's my main, that's how, that's my bread and butter and, um, and my love. Okay. Okay. So, so that's your, so that's your number one. That's, that's top on the call sheet. Number one on the call sheet is yes. actor. Okay. No, I get, I get that. But you have studied. Now you also, Broadway just came back. I don't know about, I don't know about off Broadway yet, but Amazing. I know Broadway just came back. So how do you feel? Cause you've worked on off Broadway. How do you feel about that? I mean, I love it. I'm so excited. I can't wait. Uh, I, I, I think it's so amazing that Broadway just came back. It's so, so exciting that, um, that we're going to be able to have real live theater again. It's like, it's amazing. And I guess the Tony Awards were last night. Yes, yes. <laughs> like, how are they going to do the Tony Awards? There's been no Broadway. Right. It was, it was from a year ago. So, yeah. um, but um, no, I'm super excited. I think it's, it's going to bring New York back and it's going to really, um, 
you know, give a home to uh, actors again. Yeah, what do you like about stage? What do you like, what do you like doing about stage? Because it's very different than doing TV, movies, all stuff, it's very different. Yes, it is. And, and I've done a lot of, you know, I've done a lot of film and TV stuff. Okay. And um, I started with stage. Um, stay, uh, you're, you're in front of people. So you're getting the, you're getting that hit, you know, of yes. doing something live in front of everybody. And, and, you know, like, you know, and you're, and every day it's different. So you're, 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 you get to act every day and you get to, to, you know, f discover something different about your role every day. And it's a it's always a different performance. I mean, if you're a good actor, it's still something you find yeah, something yes. different every day. And, and, and you get that, that immediate, like, you know, if they like it, if they don't, you know, you're just, you're, you're connecting with all these people out there. So it's about connecting with your audience. I you agree. I agree. I yeah, in film, in film and TV, you don't see your audience unless you're sitting in a theater watching. Like with my film, I've been going to different screenings and sitting and watching the people. I'm like, oh, they think that's funny. And, oh, they think, oh. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so you don't really, but you don't get that in the moment of actually filming it because you just have the camera and the, you know, the people around you. You know, the cameraman liked it or the director right, liked right, it. All right. The final viewer. You know, it's 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 different. Yeah, and it's funny. It's funny. I I love stage. Um, what I like about it is that every night, some folks laugh at certain parts that are different than the night before. Like they they think this is funnier than that is. You think, oh, they like this tonight for some reason. They're responding to that line more than to the other line. Last night they responded to that line more than that line. Or you can right. see them either wincing or feel their energy when you're doing something. I do. I do stand. I'm not stand up. Almost. I want to do stand up. I do spoken, uh, yeah. I do spoken word and singing. So. I just know that it's one of those things when you're in front of people, you really feel their energy. Whether they're into it or not, you feel it. It's right there. And you're right. It's kind of like a rush when they respond to something you say or do on stage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like it. yeah, but then you have to still stay. For me, you still, you still have to stay in character. You know? <laughs> well, and but you're, happy and you're like, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can play it off a little bit. But yeah, you have to stay in character and continue. Which I mean, I just wonder. I mean, like that must be so. Well, I mean, I guess you. It's a, it's a muscle. You're probably trained at this point that you know that that's what you know. Whether it's eight performances a week or seven or six or whatever, you had, that if someone coughs or sneezes or says boo or whatever, you have to keep like keep the next lines coming, next scenes coming. I guess you have to be ready for that. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. Now you said studying, you know, acting is your passion. And I, I, you know, I read some of these names that who you studied with. Um, two, of course, stand out, of course, to me. Elaine Stritch and Uta Hagen, especially. Um, what, have you, what is one thing you've taken away from each of them, studying with them? Um, it's funny. Elaine was such a character. And I, uh, with Elaine, I was in her master's. Like, um, she did, like, an advanced it was an advanced program that I was selected for. And then afterwards I worked one-on-one -on -one with her. Um, so she would coach me, she coached me in my auditions. She would, and Elaine, it's, it's funny, her chutzpah, she was like, she would just like wall to the, she would just go out and do it and nothing would stop her, you know? And I, I think I got that from her. Mm. was that um, she really had balls. I like she that. Had balls. And, you know, and that's how I kind of, that's how I am. I will just go out there and do it and not be afraid of rejection. And just, you know, she got pal Joey that way. She just, you know, she just, mm -hmm. it was really, she was amazing. She was really amazing. And Uta Hagen, um, she, I mean, she was like the master of the master. Well, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, it's really just incarnating your character and making everything real. Um, do you know, like taking imaginary circumstances and making them real and making it part of you, even though you're, it's a different you. Mm, yes. So, you know, putting yourself in the other, the other shoes. I think that's kind of being in the moment with her. 
do you have to like for you do you have to like your character you're playing it, it's nicer to like the character but there are characters that i've played that i haven't particularly liked but i found the reason why um the, what they be, because what they believe they believe they're good right they believe they're good even though they're bad they believe yes. they're good they're the hero of their own story I mean, right they're, they're, like they're, heroes. Heroes. they're wronged and this happened and this happened to them and they're what they're doing is the right thing even if they're killing their kids they're right. doing the right thing right oh yeah <laughs> like, yeah right all right like it's it's what they really believe so it's like it's getting into that space rather than being in the space of like i'm bad like i'm a i'm a bad character you know fuck you i'm gonna be, right. just be you know it's not it's like and I don't like this character, but I'm going to just have to do this. But, you know, so it's more like, okay, who am I? What happened to me? What, what do I believe? Right. Well, how was I wronged? How was I, you know, so it's really that. So, so, so again, of course, of course, I love it. Yeah. Turn yeah. it off. I really tried to turn it off. I know. It I know. It's an inside joke between us before camera. So that's to me. I love it. I love, I love it. I love it. We're leaving it in. I love it. I think it's hilarious. Yes. Yes, as you were saying. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, no, it's I, I yeah, I because I know some of the actors I talked to, I've interviewed so many different actors, um, where they say um they become their like younger sister, you know, brother or cousin, or uh, or they may necessarily not like the character, but they find their own back, they make up their own backstory, and they do all these kind of things to make them, like you said, make it real because literally we got you gotta sell it to us and to yourself, so to speak. Exactly. Right. In, in order to be able to do the role and not be just like acting, you know, okay, I'm going to say the lines and I'm going to act this now. Urgh, you know, Urgh, I'm me now. You know, like, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, that's what it is. It's you're making it real for yourself and making it real for the audience because you first have to make it real for yourself and you have to believe what you're saying. You know, oh, yeah. you have to believe your, you know, or else no one else is going to believe it. Gonna be like, oh. I agree with you on that. Yeah, they're not going to believe it. Um, so your, your new film is Tango Shalom, which you are acting in it, and you're also like a producer. So talk about this. Tell us what, what the premise of the, of, for people who don't know this, the premise of the movie. The premise of the film, so Tango Shalom is about a Hasidic rabbi with a large family, six kids, and he's having financial problem problems. Uh, I play his wife in the film and uh, he doesn't know what to do. So he prays to God for help. And God comes to him in a dream and tells him that he has to dance in a televised dance competition, the tango, to resolve his financial problems. Hilarious. But he can't. He can't touch a woman who's not his wife. Oh, he's specific. Because of his religious beliefs. Yeah. So it's like, what do you do if God tells you to do something that's against your religion? Who do you listen to, God or your religion? Wow. So he goes to all the other religions to ask for help. So it's really, it's this really sweet. It's so sweet. And it's, it, it's from the makers of my big fat Greek wedding. Oh. Um, it also stars um, Lainey Kazan from my big fat Greek wedding. Yes. Yes. And uh, Renee Taylor from the nanny. Yes. Yes. Joe Bologna, uh, who, oh. Also, he plays the priest. He's married to Renee, okay. and uh, he also co-wrote the film. And it was, it was his last film as well. Okay. And, um, and, and then Gabe Bologna, their son, directs it. Wow. Okay. And then Karina Smirnoff, Dancing with the Stars. With the stars, uh, she, yes. She plays the tango dancer, the tango instructor that yeah. Gabe meets. Um, and yeah, so it's 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 exciting. We won. We have won. As of yesterday, we won a whole bunch, or two days ago, we won a bunch more awards. We won 22 awards so far. We won four more at the Golden Door Festival. Congratulations. Um, great. <laughs> last night, a few nights ago. And um, we won a, an award for Peace and Tolerance uh, at the Artists and International Film Festival at Cannes. Very, very good. And um, so um, also for the, 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 the message of the film. So it's like a fable. It's like a feel good, warm family, funny dance comedy. 
And it's really fun to watch, especially oh, after you. COVID. You just need something light and feel good that has a little cute message, nice message. At the I'm end. assuming there must be, well, I guess we have to watch the film. There must be a scene. There must be an answer. He must, he must get an answer then. He must get an answer. No, he does get an answer. He does get an answer. That's actually, yeah, and, yeah. His yeah. friends, his uh, his friends help him. His uh, from the other religions. You know, well, I think, I think I think it's interesting. We just said that I started smiling because I felt like my first answer would be we do what God tells you because religion came from God, so I'm from the teachings of God. I'm thinking it'd be God, but then I kind of like the idea that it's it may not be that simple. Um, and reaching out to other religions kind of brings a whole sense of community of that we're all looking at higher power for some reason, you know, for whatever reasons we're looking at, maybe a different area we're feeling that gets you there. It's all still gets you there. That's very yeah. cool. That, that, yes, and and Father Anthony, Joe Bologna's character yeah. says, how can you achieve your goals? It's what Shakespeare says. How can you achieve your goals without sacrificing your sacred beliefs? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That's <laughs> very interesting. That's very interesting. Wow. Um, it's in theaters now. Yes, it's in the theaters, theaters now. And yes, it's going to be on streaming October 29th on like pay per view kind of things. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. So right now it's in theaters in a bunch of different markets. Um, in order to, I, I don't know when this is going to be on, but it's uh, in order to find out, you can go to the website and find out what theater it is where it's uh, playing near you. So it's, it's uh, Tango Shalom. Dot com T A N G O Tango Shalom S H A L O M dot com and you I'll can find that yeah you can find out more about it that watch the trailer and and uh, see what awards we've won and where it's playing and so on and so forth. Well, I mean, you know, the thing is, there's there's so much product out there um, that's good. Um, that the fact that you won awards. That's amazing. That's great. Because I mean, I, know not, I mean, we can all be nominated for things and stuff to win them. It's, it's a lot of product out there. And so that means that your film must be really good for it to win. It must touch the hearts of people who are, are voting and looking at it and going, this film is worthy of notice. So congratulations to you on that. Thank That's, you. It really means a lot. Like it was, you know, it's, yeah. it means a lot to all of us that made the film. So. Because, folks, uh, filmmaking ain't the easiest thing on earth, people out there who don't understand it. We don't use this. It's a lot of moving parts. She's like, nope. There are a lot of moving parts that come together. Whether a film is big, small, medium, does not matter. It's a lot of moving parts. It's a lot of moving parts. It's almost as you always wonder how do movies even get made half the time? Because there's so many different things come up, right? And it's just, ooh. So, as a producer hat, was it like, do you like producing? So, I, I studied <laughs> business in school, and I think. Producing is a necessary <laughs> evil. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, something needs producing. It needs the body to help the. Yes, you you have to do it. It has to be done in order to get the film out there in the world, right? You can't just like I like the creative part, you know. Yeah. Direct. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <I love laughs> Sorry about that. I'm turning this thing off. So it's so not do I love it. it. Hey, it's wow, Zoom, goodbye. folks. It's Zoom, people. It's Zoom. Anyway, so yeah. I'm so, real. I'm a real person with telephones and exactly, real things. Exactly, exactly. The dog that's staring at me over there. <laughs> <laughs> Little baby angel. Um, yeah. Right, so yeah, producing is a necessary evil you kind of have to do to get something done. Yes. There's a lot of, you know, looking at budgets and, and permits. And I mean, so there's a lot. Trust me, I produce too. A lot. Work. A lot, it's it's a lot, a lot of work. work. So yeah. congratulations. So, so congratulations to the completion of this film and it's got it out there because I just know it's not, it's just not the easiest. And, uh, and, what we, was got out there and we got it into theaters because yes, I'll tell you many, many films that are independent don't actually make it into theaters. True. They'll do the festival circuits. They may even win awards, you know, and they'll do good. And, and then it just like, it never makes it into the theater. It just disappears. It gets shelved. It gets, you know, so we are so grateful that, that, you know, we were picked up and we're in theaters now. So we're very happy about that. Tango Shalom is the film, tangoshalom.com. You want to know about, more about her, go to judybeecher.com. That's B-E-E. -E. And, and IMDB. You can IMDB I'll say, me. I'll say it next. I'm going to say it next. And IMDB. See, they're <laughs> also good. Check her out there. And Judy, and that's Judy G J U D I. B e e c h r. So you can see it. I'll spell. I have it on here. So you'll see it scroll correctly. But I'll put them all in the description so you can see what 
um, figure out more about her and this film. And Judy, thanks for being on the show. You're lovely. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what more you have up your sleeves, what's going to be happening next for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. In between the pages on Facebook, JLJ Media is everywhere else in the world. You just figure out we're everywhere. Um, and I'm James Lott Jr. You can follow me at James Lott Jr. Everywhere. It's everywhere. Even on TikTok. There too. Doing stuff. Uh, but we will see you next time. Take care, everybody. Be kind to each other and see you next time.